Hello, I'm Mrs. Jansen. Let's draw a line design landscape together. First, I'd like you to notice how different these two examples are. As we draw the line design landscape together, I'd like you to know that every artist creates art differently and you can draw your landscape using your own creative ideas. First, let's start with vocabulary. Anyone looking at a picture or photograph or work of art is called the viewer. The part of the picture that appears closest to the viewer, usually at the bottom, is called the foreground. The part of the picture that appears farthest from the viewer, usually at the top, is called the background. And the area of the picture between the foreground and the background is called the middle ground. So let's notice these rocks in the foreground and look how large they look. That's because they're closest to the viewer. Now let's look at the middle ground. Do you see the person? We know a person is much larger than these rocks, but because they're in the middle ground, they appear smaller. Now let's carefully observe this landscape and notice the variety of lines you see. There's a lot of different types. We see scallop lines, we see curved lines, we see wavy lines. Notice the line design in the sun and the sky. And notice how this line design blends into the background. Notice how this artist used different marks and shapes on the mountains to create texture. Notice the curved lines of the sun rays. Now let's carefully observe this work of art. Notice the lines you see in the mountains. This artist was selective by carefully choosing which mountains should have lines. So notice the way this artist placed the lines. We have balance, visual balance, when we look at this work of art. We've got a mountain with line designs on the left and then mountains with line designs on the right. Notice there are no other line designs in this work of art. I'd like you to notice how high the waves reach into the foreground. Notice how size and overlap are used to create the illusion of space and depth. So now it's time for us to draw a line design landscape together. Please have your paper, pencil, and crayons ready. You'll see the screen change so we can draw together. So please place your paper landscape style. That means it's horizontal or across. And the first thing we're going to do is let's look at the bottom and the left side. And remember we said that those waves we're about halfway up the page. I'm going to just make a small mark um, for myself as a guide to show me how far those waves will go up. So about four finger spaces above the bottom of the page, let's start a spiral. It's going to be drawn counterclockwise, so place your pencil down and move your pencil and draw the line in the opposite direction that the hands on a clock go. And as we go around and make this curve line larger, bring it down to the bottom of the page. 
So now we're going to go back to the right side of this spiral and add another curve line that goes out and then goes off the page on the left. And let's go to the same spot and add a, another curve line that goes out and off the page. So now we're going to build off of this first wave we've drawn. Let's go underneath the spiral and add a curve line that goes down to the bottom of the paper. Let's go toward the front of the spiral and add another curve line that goes to the bottom of the paper. Now about three finger spaces away, um, let's draw another counterclockwise spiral. It does not have to be perfectly across or horizontal from the first one we drew. As you draw this spiral, bring it to that first wave with a curved line. Now let's return to the bottom and add a second curved line that goes to the first wave. And now let's add a third curved line. So we're showing movement with curved lines. Let's go to the bottom and add a wavy line that becomes a spiral. And this spiral is clockwise. It's going in the same direction as the hands on the clock. Now let's go to the bottom and we'll add another curve line. Let's start another counterclockwise spiral. And it looks like a stretched out S. And at the end, it has a clockwise spiral. Now we're going to go back and add a curve line. Looks like a stretched out S and another clockwise spiral. So our goal was to create movement with curved lines and spirals. Let's go to this second wave we drew and now we're going to draw the water's edge with a wavy line. And this wavy line goes off the paper. Now we can add more wavy lines to show movement in the water. So now we've got the water drawn. It's time to draw the mountains. And remember we saw mountains, there was a lot of overlap. So first let's draw the mountains in the very front and remember we need to leave room for the sun. The top edge of the mountain is not always a straight line. And we'll draw the second part of that mountain and now we'll start at the edge of the paper and draw a curved line. And we pick it up when we get to that first mountain we started. Now let's go to the right side of the first mountain we drew and add another mountain. And make sure you draw it to the edge of the paper. And now I'm going to add one more mountain behind the mountains we drew. So notice how many times we've used overlap. So I've decided that I'd like to show a sunset and the sun is setting behind the mountains. So I'm going to add a curved line. And now I'm going to decide how I'd like to show those sun rays. 
So I'm actually going to start at what's more like the center of the sun, and I'm going to add a U shape. And this is actually going to be the empty space between the, the rays. So this is the actual sun ray. So I'm going to use a lot of different U's to build the sun rays. Now when we looked at the examples, you saw different ideas for drawing the sun and the sun rays. And I know you've got great ideas. You can use your own. You do not have to draw exactly how you see me drawing. All right, and now I'm going to start from the center and add the U's on this side. So notice how much overlap we have. We have a lot. All right, and now I'm just going to show you an example of uh, adding color with crayon. So you'll notice right away that I used a lot of blending. So the first thing I did is I used a dark purple and outlined the lines in the water and then I added a blue on top of the purple. So that blended. And then the ocean water looks different on the camera than it does um, in real life. This is really the turquoise. And then I blended a blue and a green with the turquoise, as well as some light pink on the edges of the wave. The mountains are a blend of your light green and your secondary regular color green. And then I outlined the mountains with the dark blue and I added the line design to create texture. The sun is a blend of yellow, two different oranges and red. And just a small spiral design in the background. So I hope this gives you a good idea starter and I hope you enjoyed drawing the line design landscape and using your own ideas. I look forward to making art with you again soon.